Welcome to the Purpose, Peace and Profit podcast with me, Abby Rogers, where I help driven entrepreneurs to understand how to release stress, struggle and overwhelm so they can effortlessly evolve and release their unstoppable inner power. I'm a therapist, mentor and business owner and I help stressed business owners and they're all consuming businesses. And I'm here to share the insights I've gleaned over the past six years, helping trailblazers, entrepreneurs and conscious leaders on their quest for self-mastery and success without the stress. I'll share my secrets to help you release overwhelm, reconnect with your purpose and passion, reclaim your headspace and joy and expand into receiving far more than you ever thought possible. Let's go. Hello, so we're here to talk today about imposter syndrome, one of my favourite subjects. Uh, Some of you who've been following me for a little while will know that I have my own uh, kind of take on imposter syndrome, which is quite different to a lot of what you might hear in the entrepreneurial world. And we're going to talk today about what is really behind it and what else can tend to hold successful entrepreneurs back. Uh, Just to say, first of all, if you are somebody who feels like they struggle with imposter syndrome and everything else in your business, you've kind of figured out, you've done all the marketing stuff, it's all up and running and it's working well. But despite, you know, pushing through for the past few months and years uh, and getting all the things done, you still feel those imposter feelings from time to time then uh, yeah, I have a free guide. I've linked it in the show notes. So just jump in and grab that, download your free guide. And it's five steps to freedom from imposter syndrome, which is really going to give you a lovely deep dive into exactly what's going on and give you some useful exercises and tips that you can use to help yourself move forward with it into a much better place. So the first thing to look at is why imposter syndrome then? What what's going on there. Um, It is, as you've noticed, something that can affect anyone at any stage of life and business. And it really doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're introvert, extrovert, doesn't matter uh, if you're neurotypical, neurodivergent, doesn't matter what degree of success you've achieved in life, really doesn't matter what your background is, anything like that. It's just one of those things that is indiscriminate in who (laughs) suffers with it. We're going to dive into why that is today. Now, the first thing to really understand um, about imposter syndrome, to understand why we get it, is that it's not, it's not a thing. It's not, as you might think, a syndrome, because the word imposter syndrome, the phrase imposter syndrome, really kind of makes us think it's this condition that some of us have and some of us don't, um, which is why I really don't get on with the term so well, as you may know if you've been following me for a while. Um, But it's more that basically a collection of thoughts and feelings and patterns that we've picked up throughout our lives. So essentially traumatic imprints, emotional imprints, triggered responses that we tend to experience whenever we are under the influence of either conscious or subconscious anxiety. And just to define anxiety here, because a lot of people listening would be thinking, well, I have uh, imposter syndrome, I recognise that in myself, but I don't identify as somebody who has anxiety at all. I'm a very positive person. I'm somebody who copes uh, with things really well in life and never suffered with anxiety. As far as I'm aware, it's just not a big thing for me. Um, Other people will be thinking, yeah, I completely understand that. I I noticed that my anxiety and my imposter syndrome tie in. Um, But anxiety essentially is is an over-response to uh, stressful situations and the world of business is just one constantly stressful (laughs) situation Uh, and we're not always aware that our system is over responding to that so we can feel very much like we're doing a great job of fighting all the fires and coping but underneath um, deep in our subconscious without us even realizing it our brain can be tipping over into a fight or flight Uh, response and it can be so kind of insidious such a low level that we don't even really notice it happening 
um, or we can just be such a survivor and a coper and somebody who's just relentlessly positive and good at getting through life that it, it just like we brush it aside we don't pay much attention to it and we just get on with things and that's exactly where I was so I completely <laughs> get that side of things um, but I can absolutely guarantee you that if you are suffering with any kind of imposter syndrome uh, symptoms as it were any of those feelings thoughts behaviors that indicate imposter syndrome then there is very definitely some underlying anxiety in the equation whether you're aware of it or not um, and that's not to say that you are an anxious person that's just to say that your brain and your system are responding with a degree of anxiety that is making you notice those imposter thoughts feelings behaviors because it's kind of the fuel to the fire without the anxiety that we don't have access to the underlying imposter narratives we um when we have no anxiety in the equation whatsoever then our brain is fully in the present moment it's fully able to shift and change our thoughts in the present moment and respond to the situation in a really calm confident way and weighed in so even if we have grown up with some incorrect beliefs and narratives in the background when our brain is in full conscious control we just dismiss those thoughts instantly and they're not a thing they don't affect us in the way that imposter syndrome is so if we are experiencing imposter syndrome the gates must be open which indicates that there is a little bit of anxiety brewing away in the background so the thing to to understand is that those imprints, those thoughts, feelings, behaviours, they go way back in our history. They're things that we have learned throughout our lives from when we were very, very tiny all the way through to adulthood. And they are, they're sort of templates for survival, if you like, templates for the way that we do things to ensure that life keeps working for us. Um, they're not always great templates <laughs> they're not always that helpful to us we don't necessarily want them there but it's what our brain has erroneously learned along the way is the way to look after ourselves and keep ourselves safe so it's all the unhelpful things you've learned to think feel believe over the years and all the things that you've taken on board and assumed into your subconscious at some point as the truth um, you may not believe them now fully, you may question them now, you may consciously, rationally say, why on earth would I respond that way? Why on earth would I feel, think, behave that way? Um, but deep down your subconscious has decided that that is a, a useful thing for you and it's kind of clinging onto it. And these, these things can then start to feel like part of who we are. They can feel like part of our identity because they've been there for so long. Like, for example, social anxiety, just taking that as one. We can feel like, well, I've always been really socially anxious. I've always struggled with public speaking. That's just who I am, right? And it, it's not necessarily, it doesn't have to be the truth. It doesn't have to be that way forever. But it's just what your brain at some point has learned is a good safety mechanism for you and and if you pay close attention to that, if you are somebody who struggles with public speaking and, and social anxiety, you'll notice that there are times when you feel much more calm and rationally in control and times when it's just feeling awful and like this massive pressure. And that's that's a good barometer for your anxiety levels at that particular moment in time. So these beliefs and um, things that have got assumed into your subconscious over the years don't have to dictate your future they don't have to hang around forever which is good um, but they may well still keep rearing their head even after you've dealt with them for years even after you've seen a good degree of success in life there's this kind of misconception that if we keep feeling the fear for long enough um, or keep faking it in in our businesses and our lives then eventually we'll get to a point where it all feels easy and for a lot of things that can be true but it can also go the other way um, and it can also just be that we kind of keep on feeling that underlying discomfort and fear and, and keep doing it anyway and that's totally totally possible and quite uh, quite frequent it is not unusual for me to work with somebody 
who's just like, I'm just, just sick of facing up against this thing. Let's just get rid of it. Um, and so we do that. So one of the things that we've always learned and that actually tends to drive a lot of our imposter responses is a narrative that actually helps us a lot or has helped us a lot in our businesses, in our lives so far. And that's this narrative of always try harder and be better. And we've learned throughout our lives that that is the safe thing to do. That is the good thing to do. That's what keeps us getting the rewards, getting the love, getting the good feedback for our work. So we learn to continually criticise ourselves, continually keep pushing the the goalposts, continually keep looking for the next benchmark and, and raising the bar because we think that we need to do that. And we think that that inner critic is our friend because it's helped us um, to keep getting love in life, to keep getting rewarded for the things that we've achieved. And so our brain erroneously learns to think that we don't want to let that go. And so we never learn to switch it off and that inner critic's always there, kind of nagging away in the background. Um, But we assume, and this is something again I hear from a lot of entrepreneurs, um, we assume that it's it's a good thing and then we need that to keep us motivated and without that we would lose our drive and enthusiasm and spark so it's it's good to have that kind of determination that kind of motivation that comes from needing to always prove ourselves and, and be better now actually when I work with people and we reduce all the anxiety and strip away some of those traumas and old beliefs and limiting patterns and things, people don't lose their spark and their drive. What they tend to do actually is reconnect with that in a really powerful, positive way, in a way that helps them tap into things that really, really align with them and that feel just genuinely exciting and motivating and fill them up with enthusiasm and kind of pull them forward. So rather than it being this constant push of I've got to do better, I've got to prove myself, I've got to... Uh, work harder it becomes like exciting to follow the journey and we're as motivated by that as we are by all those pushing things and by that inner critic we don't need the inner critic to feel motivated and to feel powerful and to keep achieving wonderful things in our lives in fact it often can sabotage us and lead to burnout because we just keep thinking that we have to work harder and harder so hopefully that kind of helps you get a little bit of an understanding into what's really going on with imposter syndrome and to understand maybe why you find it so hard to still switch off some of those stories and and helpful narratives after all these years the the try harder the do better the i'm not good enough the um i want to please everybody you know I, i am good enough i want to reach for more things but i don't want to upset and offend everybody Um, those narratives can really end up going into overdrive when we've got lots of pressure and stress and anxiety going on in our lives and businesses. So I really hope that helps you. Just to run through a few other things then that actually tend to come along with imposter syndrome, because it's all so interwoven and, and so complex. It's not, as we said, just this little neat parcel of limiting beliefs and behaviours and thoughts and feelings that that make up imposter syndrome they spill over into all sorts of other things and it's it's really very very intermingled with lots of other stuff that we tend to suffer with at the same time so i think it's not something that ever really occurs in isolation so a few of the other issues that you might notice coexist with your imposter syndrome if that is a problem for you so established business owners I've worked with also tend to struggle with things like anxiety around money and worrying about how long their business might last, how stable their business is, how stable the industry is. Tend to worry also about things like procrastination and indecisiveness um, and that can hang on and that's part of the imposter syndrome package in terms of we can fear getting it wrong and that can be a reason why we are indecisive and why we procrastinate but there are 
tons of other reasons why as well it's not all linked to those imposter narratives at all and uh, we'll be covering that very soon in another episode actually digging into all the real reasons why we procrastinate and helping you identify what might what what your reasons for procrastination might be um a lot of us have difficulty trusting others difficulty letting go and stepping back and that was definitely one of mine which is why I say a lot of us um and it can be really hard to do that if you um like to make sure that things go really really well in your business we can often find it impossible to switch off and relax and enjoy life and um and that again comes with that anxiety brewing in the background And with that inner critic telling us that we have to constantly keep working, try harder, do better. Um, A lot of entrepreneurs go through the emotional roller coaster, times when they feel real loss of motivation, real lack of focus. And that can become quite, quite deeply entrenched. It's not unusual for people to reach out to me when they're just like, I just don't know how to get the fire back and the passion back for my business that I once had. Things like finding that the business now feels like a real burden instead of this wonderful thing that you were so passionate about in the beginning. Feeling very trapped in all the systems and procedures. Um, Feeling trapped in spending on things that aren't really creating a healthier bottom line, but are kind of feeling like you just want to spend in the business as well. That's a, a big one there. Guilt and shame and loneliness this is something that you don't often hear talked about in the entrepreneurial space but um, it's not uncommon at all um, for people to really feel that way and to um, not always be the kind of people that are great at communicating those feelings either and I again certainly identify with that one back in the day and issues around communication as well and again that can really dovetail in with imposter syndrome that can be a a biggie but it can also just be to do with our communication style and the way that we've learned to communicate and just struggling to really get our message across um, in the way that we would like so that we can get what we want done in our businesses build a cohesive team do all the things that we need to do to really take this wonderful places so that's just a brief rundown. We'll be covering lots of those bits and pieces over the forthcoming episodes. We've got a really exciting lineup coming for you uh, over the next few weeks. And as I mentioned, if you want to grab that guide on imposter syndrome, dig a little bit deeper and start to understand how you can manage this for yourself, then I've linked it in the show notes. So just jump in and grab that, download your free guide and um, away you go. Thanks for listening today. I'm so grateful to be able to share my thoughts with incredible people like you. If you'd like a little bit more of me in your world, then you can find a wealth of resources over on my website, www.abigail-rogers.com to help you release imposter syndrome and anxiety, reclaim your power and step into your ultimate abundance. And of course, I'd love you to subscribe or leave a review over on your favourite podcast platform. Take care. See you soon.